Okay, so today I'm going to do a video on filters, and this particular video is going to be what a filter can do and what a filter can't do. Because I generally get some people seem really confused over what the purpose of a filter is, and can it do this, can it do that. So, let's start off explaining how a filter works. You've probably heard this lots of times if you're a regular viewer of my videos, but lots of people find a channel and then, you know, don't know where to start. So, a filter's job is to basically filter out horrible substances from being inhaled. Um, so it does exactly what it says, it's a filter. So if you imagine you've got poison coming in here, uh, clean air comes out here, because the idea is that the poisons get trapped in the filter. Now there's two segments to a military NBC or CBRN filter, also known as a combination filter. There's what you'd call a particulate filter, and this is at the front, and I have a separate particle filter here to show you. There we go, this is just a particle filter only. You can see the sort of papery type stuff in there in a heap of design that's ribbed. So what a particulate filter does is it catches particles. So that's things like dust, asbestos, uh, small bits of hair, bacteria, uh, radioactive dusts, particles, everything like that. So it's pretty self-explanatory. A particulate filter blocks particles. And how it works is, especially if you go for a P3, because um, with particle filters they have several ratings, um, the EU kind of rating is P1, P2 and P3. Um, the higher the number the better, so if you're getting one just get a P3 filter because it's going to block more than anything else. In America I believe it's called P95, maybe P97 and P100. Um, but I don't like the US system very much simply because the P100 filter does not block 100% of the stuff, so it's a bit misleading how they name them. Um, so I always use the term P3, but the point is that P3 is like 99 point something effective, but it's not totally effective. Lots of people ask me, why don't they make one that's 100% effective? Well, they could. It would just be a solid block of solid paper. Um, and what that would mean would be that you'd suffocate to death because you wouldn't be able to breathe through it. So you need to have tiny, tiny holes so you could breathe. In theory, they could probably get much closer to 100% than they currently do on the 99 point whatever ones. The issue is, if they did that, for the slight amount of stuff the filter might then block, you'd probably have a much more difficult time breathing through it which would mean that, you know, it would be impractical, really. So, um, you know, a um, P3 filter is basically, it blocks particles. So if you imagine things like fallout in the air, uh, which is radioactive dust and kind of smoke, or just things like asbestos or anthrax or whatever else, that would get blocked by the particle filter because they're particulates. And the idea is they're bigger than the holes, so they get stuck on the holes, clean air comes out this side. So... In a military filter, you always have a particulate filter at the bottom. If it's an NBC CBRN one, you can actually just about see the ribs of the paper in there. So, what then is next? Well, in the rest of the filter, this is where you have charcoal. And the job of the activated carbon or charcoal is to be adsorbent. Not absorbent, but adsorbent. Think absorbent, but with a D. So what this means is rather than the chemicals going into it, they get stuck on the outside of it. So... Basically, if you've got this poison gas and it's too small to be blocked by a particle filter, what the charcoal does is it's very reactive and has a large surface area. So the chemicals react to that and stick to the charcoal rather than going through. So if you imagine you've got your dust and poisons on this side, they all get blocked in the filter and then can't come out the other side. So that explains to you simply how the actual filters themselves block things. So what can't they do then? So, most importantly, a filter cannot provide you with air. It simply filters air that already exists. So if you're in an environment with no oxygen, a filter will not help you. You'll still suffocate to death because you don't have air to breathe. Because obviously this is going to clean dirty air, but it can't provide you with oxygen. There needs to be oxygen and air there in the first place for a filter to work. Um, in theory, if there was other chemicals, I guess you could be breathing them in and you'd be filtering out some of the bad stuff. But if there's still no air to breathe, it's not going to do anything. So... Obviously, a filter cannot provide you there. Similarly, you can't use them in very low oxygen environments, simply for the reason you'd still suffocate. Um, you know, the same reason why it doesn't provide you there. There's not air trapped in one of these. I think some people get the misconception. Um, you'd put one of these on your mask, um, you'd sort of like pull a pin or unplug it or something, and then you'd get whatever the volume is of the filter in air. Um, the closest you're going to get to that is a rebreather where you have the CO2 scrubber, but that works on recycling air. Or you obviously have things like air tanks for um, diver sets or self-contained breathing apparatus. And they obviously, the air tanks on there do contain air, because that's their job, but that's not a filter. The filter is simply to filter things, it's in the name. So obviously that's the most important one. So, also, um, 
it can only do what it's designed to do. So if you had a particular only filter, it's not going to uh, filter out vapour and gas. Similarly, if you had a charcoal only filter out the particulate one, it, it would probably to a certain degree filter particles, just because um, you always have an additional particulate filter at the far end to keep the charcoal in. Uh, if you have a charcoal filter, you have to have particles on both si particulate filters on both sides, um, just to keep the charcoal contained in the filter to stop it leaking out. But they would only have to be necessary like a P1 filter, not a P3 filter. So um, bear that in mind. Um, but for the most part, a charcoal filter won't filter particulates, and a particle filter won't filter vapors. That's why you get military sort of NBC combination filters because they do a lot more. So why would filters like this exist then? Uh, mostly for industry. If you work in an industry where you know you're only going to be exposed to one level of threat, it makes sense to get a much cheaper, lighter weight filter that just deals with the threat you're likely to experience. Because to complicate things, well, the simple bit is if you're only exposed to particulate threats, a particle filter on its own is going to be good enough, that's all you need. However, when you get exposed to uh, vapours and gases, that's where things get a bit more complicated, as I've spoken about before with ABEC filters. So, lots of different gases and vapours are in different groups, and the thing is, you can filter some of them and you can't filter others. Uh, the majority of kind of gases you'll come into contact with, potentially, uh, can be filtered, but you'd need a combination filter to do it, like an ABEC filter. For example, most CBRN filters now are full ABEC filters, but you get organic vapour, which is the A, B, which is inorganic vapour, uh, e, which is acidic gases, and things like sulfur dioxide are also in there, and K is ammonia-based gases. Um, so if you imagine each of those letters covers a massive amount of different kinds of gases. Um, so for industry, if you knew you were just paint spraying or something, or just working with something like chlorine, you might only need an organic or an inorganic filter, um, which is probably just going to be plain charcoal. However, if you're dealing with ammonia and stuff like that, what they actually need to do is called impregnation of a filter. So when you impregnate a filter, what that is, is basically where you, um, it's generally like bits of metals. How, it's like how a catalytic converter works in a car. There's bits of metals in there which certain gases react to and become neutralised. Um, so it's basically the exact same thing as a charcoal, but you're adding other sort of ground up metals in there as well, just so certain gases that wouldn't react to the charcoal react to them. So. If you didn't know what gas you're going to be exposed to, you always need a combination filter because it's no good having a filter that blocks some things and not other things and then being exposed to it. I've also been asked, if you have a mask which is dual filters, could you have like a particulate filter on one side and a vapour filter on the other? No. You need to have a single filter or two exact same filters that block the exact same things. The reason being, let's say you're exposed to several types of threats at once. If you had one filter that blocks half of those and the other filter that blocks the other half, the issue is that the half that each filter doesn't block are going to go through those filters and get you. Um, you know, having one good combination filter is better than having lots of smaller filters that don't do much. Um, you know, it's why I've said before, lots of militaries used to hand out ammonia filters separately to uh, ABE filters. What was the problem with that? Well, if you only have an ammonia filter as a separate thing, if ammonia is released on its own, great, you can use the ammonia filter. If you've been exposed to chlorine or mustard, great, you can use your other filter. If ammonia and chlorine or whatever else are released at the same time, you're screwed because you can't actually um, have both filters working at once. Um, you know, no matter how you do it, you're always going to be exposed to some sorts of gas. So, you know, there's that. Um, also, filters do expire, but expiration on the filter varies because you'll see that different manufacturers rate their filters for different lengths of times. Um, a lot of it depends on how well sealed the filter is initially, obviously these filters are open. However, if you've got a filter that's plugged at that end with a sort of cap, and you had a screw-on cap on the top, and then it was sealed in a foil vacuum bag, that filter's going to last a really long time just because of how well sealed it is. However, if a filter's open and exposed to the air, uh, when you're in a house you'll typically notice that there are odours. Um, if you go into somebody else's house you'll particularly notice that. Not because they're dirty people or whatever, but if it's not your own sort of smells, you tend to notice them more. So, um, if you have a filter just laying around, open up somewhere, and there's all these odours, those odours are going to be falling into the filter, and the charcoal is going to be absorbing them to the point where eventually the filter can't absorb any more. So, um, yes, filters do expire. Now, as said, 
the length of time filters take to expire can really vary. I did a video covering all this and it was a very long winded video. But particulate filters last a lot longer because they don't absorb anything, they just block things physically. Um, charcoal wears out faster, but I've had lots of old filters where I opened filters from 20, 30 years ago. Some of them work, some of them don't against vapors. So you're really playing Russian roulette if you actually decide to buy old filters and rely on them to work. Um, I, as far as I'm concerned, you can cheap out a bit on the mask and buy a surplus mask in very good condition, but when it comes to filters, especially if they are from protection from a very real threat you face, don't cheap out on the filters. Buy brand new sealed filters with a good long date on them so you know when you break the filter and put it on it's guaranteed to work. Because um, it seems very odd to me that some people might be willing to spend hundreds on a mask but then cheap out on the filters to the point where it doesn't matter how good your mask is if your filter's expired. So hopefully this video's covered most of the points because again I could still waffle on for on and on and on for ages about things filters can and cannot do. Um, but off the top of my head, I can't think of any more major points now. I'm sure if you ask them in the comments, my voice is <coughs> going a bit now as well. Uh, I will be able to answer uh, your comments. But the point is that filters do a very specific job. Um, if it's a threat that the filter can deal with, great. If it's not, then, you know, a filter can't deal with it. And not all filters are equal. Um, and, you know, there's some things filters can't do. For example, <coughs> things like carbon monoxide cannot be filtered by a regular filter. You can get filters that are advertised to block carbon monoxide. Some of them work more like rebreather scrubbers, and others, I think, can block very low concentrations of carbon monoxide outside, which is kind of why you wouldn't have to worry about it anyway. Um, but there you go. That's how filters sort of kind of work and what they do and don't do.